by the new Polaroid 10-second automatic camera. Only three buttons to push. One, two, three. And in just 10 seconds, a finished picture. And now let's all play What's My Line? Now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now, a gentleman who is causing a great deal of laughter at the Morosco Theater in Blood, Sweat, and Stanley Pool. Its star, Darren McGavin. Nothing. And now, a new friend and a very passworthy opponent in a very twist bedecked gown, Miss <laughs> Dorothy Kilgallen. And now, a gentleman who is dancing in the streets because Random House has so many books on the bestseller list, Bennett Sir. <laughs> well, backstage with us most Sunday nights before we go on is a charming, irresistible girl named Virginia Warren Daly. And here's a lucky galoo she married, John Charles Daly. Thank you very much, Betty. That was quite a picture, irresistible in its way, that uh, Dorothy raised. Can you imagine seeing Bennett dancing in the streets? <laughs> wow. School is out this week, for sure. Darrell McGavin, it's very nice to have you with us on the panel. Thank you, John. I hope you have an enjoyable half hour, although it's a no howls barred half hour, I must tell you. We have some interesting occupations. I think you're going to find them a little tough tonight, panel. But we trust that you enjoy the tussle. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger. And, and now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <clears throat> Kirpal Singh, is that right? <laughs> I must be honest and tell you that Mr. Singh and I cooked that up a little about a minute ago. I don't really read. That's Persian, isn't it? Yes. yes. Well, I actually, I used to be pretty good at Persian, but I haven't had a chance to use it lately, Mr. Singh. Where are you from, sir? Roseville, California. Roseville, California. <laughs> it's nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? Mr. Singh, you. will you join me over here, please? Uh, are you familiar with our scorekeeping system, Mr. Singh? Yes, sir. All right, fine. Let's let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Singh is salaried, deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Singh, may we rule out that you have anything whatsoever to do with making wigs? Yes. Is the product that you do have something to do with anything that I might use? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Gap McGavin. Is it something that I might use? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is it something that a government or a corporation would use? Yes. Uh, would a government use it? Yes. Would the United States government use it? Yes. Uh, is it in any sense uh, scientific? No. More conference. Yes. It is scientific. Yeah, what, yes. we, what we mean to suggest, are that I think strictly speaking, if we held literally to uh, uh, Mr. Singh's line, we would say that it was not scientific. But in the broad sense of science and all of the vast areas that it covers in our complex society, we will agree it has a scientific identity. I see. Uh, would the 
armed forces of the United States have any use for your product? Yes. Uh, is your product in any sense uh, dangerous? No. Well, um... <laughs> no. Well, Mr. Singh meant here that uh, in his personal relationship to it, he doesn't consider that it's dangerous. I think uh, others uh, who were not as closely related to it, uh, who do not have, let us say, his immediate knowledge of it, might consider that it has some dangerous aspects. Uh, Mr. Singh, could this product be used in wartime? Yes. Uh, would it be considered part of the arms or armament of the country? Yes. Uh, could I carry it in my hands? No. Three out and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Singh, is this product of yours used in any way in ammunition or a missile or rocket of any kind? Yes. Is it used in a missile or rocket? Yes. Is it part of the missile or rocket rather than being put into it after the missile or rocket is finished? Is it part... Now, you're using rocket here and missile as interchangeable, as interchangeable words. interchangeable. As, is, is it, it part, part of it as differentiated from fuel or something that might be put in to make the missile or rocket go? Is it an integral part of the missile rather than a fuel or application or something like that? I think we'd have to say yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here you're using the word rocket interchangeably with missile. No, no, I'm using rocket as uh, differentiating it from a missile. I see. Well, that makes it difficult, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, what do you think we ought to say to that? Is it... Would you ask well, your question again, Benny? Well, by a rocket, I mean, would mean something that is projected up into the air that is not necessarily intended to smash something. Uh -huh. That's why I'm differentiating a rocket from a missile. I see. In other words, you're thinking of a rocket as a space vehicle. A space a vehicle missile, that and is and it would be, be sending part something of that. up into the air. I think we'd say yes to that. Mm. Yes, it is. Is this uh, one of the new uh, missiles that is being uh, designed as a possible thing that will interfere with other missiles that might be sent over by a hostile country? No. No, that's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Did, uh, did, uh, did Bennett get a no on fuel? I, I didn't quite... Bennett got a yes to it's a part of a space vehicle or missile rather than a fuel or some other um, uh, substance that is subsequently added to say. But it is a tangible substance. Yes, it is. It was, it's a part of a space vehicle or a missile. Is it solid rather than liquid? It's solid rather than liquid. Solid. Mm -hmm. Is it related in any way to dynamite? Mm. In, uh, by that I mean is it explosive? No. no. Five down and five to go, Mr. McGavin. Am I correct in assuming that... No, that's not the way I want to say that. How can I get you to say yes without saying no, huh? Uh, is it alive? No. no. Oh, boy. Dorothy? Is it, is it something that is contained within the rocket? Contained within the space vehicle or missile, you mean, of which it is a part? What, whatever Bennett got. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is it something inside the shell? Yes. In the, inside the entire shell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it made of material rather than metal? No. No. Bennett? Well, is it then part of the lining of the missile or some of the furniture that would be found inside of it? No. no. I'm going to throw in the towel because actually, Bennett, you had it. And what I made so much of, are you speaking of a space vehicle? I thought you'd grab it. We were talking about rockets because that's what Mr. Singh does. He's a rocket designer. The propulsion system. <laughs> Thank you.
That wasn't quite fair because Bennett had it all. Just just missed it by a thousand, ten thousandths of an inch, I guess, if we're talking. Into, but I had to try. Oh, I missed it. <laughs> if, I, if you just said the word engine, we'd have been in, in gravy. Actually, uh, Mr. Singh has another secret for you. You cast your mind back to November of 1955, and Mr. Singh was with us then. But at that time, was working here in New York at the Brooklyn Navy Yard as a marine engineer. Oh. Now he's, he is a rocket designer with uh, Aerojet Corporation and has, I think, one of the most fascinating and rewarding uh, assignments that there is in these United States. He works on the Polaris missile system, the, the missile which we use in our Polaris submarines, which can be shot out from underwater, and without which today we might not be in, in, the, in a solid a position to deter uh, action by any aggressive nation. So I know you get a great deal of pleasure out of that. Your education is mostly in the Punjab, is it not? Yes. You didn't go to American universities. I just uh, did some final courses here. Did some, which, which universities did you go to here? Uh, Sacramento. In Sacramento? Yeah, State yeah. College. Ah, oh, fine. That's a fine school. Part of, you, part of California, isn't it, Sacramento? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean California University. I didn't mean it was part of the state. No. No, it's not part of you. It's not. not. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Bennett, you were close again. Uh, well, Mr. Singh, congratulations on, on your work. I know it gives you a great satisfaction to be involved in it. And thanks again for being a guest on What's My Line. Thank you. And now let's meet a uh, second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Carol Chamberlain. 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 Is it Miss or Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes. Miss Chamberlain, where are you from? I'm from Akron, Ohio. You're in Akron, Ohio? Yes. This, this is a happy circumstance. You will be, I'm sure, glad to know that uh, more than a hundred folks from the Akron Beacon Journal, our guests in the audience oh. here in the theater tonight, so you have your own cheering section with you. Wonderful. <laughs> All righty, now, uh, may I present our panel, Miss Chambers? Mm -hmm. Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes. Then we let the audience at home and in the theater know exactly what your line is. Get the scoreboard back to zero. Tell the panel that you are salaried, that you deal in the service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Bennett Surf. Miss Chamberlain, am I correct in assuming that you have nothing to do with the Akron Beacon Journal? Yes, you are. <laughs> if John Knight sees this show, he'll take steps. <laughs> uh, do you do your work in or near the city of Akron? No, I don't. That's one down and nine to go, Miss French. Do you work indoors, Miss Chamberlain? No. Ah, uh, small question, a small conference. I am sorry about this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got a question here, Miss Arlene. We want to be fair. Actually, Miss Chamberlain does not herself work indoors. However. Uh, the work that she does can be performed indoors. On that basis, we'll give you a qualified yes. But by that you mean that Miss Chamberlain does her work out of doors, yes. is that it? Mm -hmm. But it is a job that is very often done indoors. Well, let's say it can be it done. It can be done indoors. Mm -hmm. uh, do you need any special uh, equipment in your job? Yes, I do. <clears throat> uh, is it something that you wear? No. Smock? Wait. Conference, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> John is now finding out what she wears. <laughs> well, now, Arlene, that'll cost you a no. <laughs> two down and eight to go, Mr. McGavin. You get a no, too, John. <laughs> she doesn't wear special. No. No, the equipment is not worn. Is the equipment that you, uh, that you deal with, uh, is it uh, equipment used in relation to other human beings? 
No. No, I don't think so, Daryl. No, Three down, seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it equipment that is used in connection with objects? No. No, four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. It's not used in, with either objects or with human beings? What else is there? In relation, well, let us say it's equipment that is used in connection with the line which uh, Miss Chamberlain is performing <laughs> and for her benefit. Miss Chamberlain, uh, do you require any special training for the job that you have? Yes. Do you have to get some kind of a degree? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you have whatsoever to do in your job with the atmosphere in any way? No. no. Six down and four to go, Mr. McGavin. Do you have anything to do with what might broadly be termed horticulture? No. Horticulture? Yes. No. Seven no. down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. To get back to the special equipment, Miss Chamberlain, uh, is this something you hold in your hand? Yes. And uh, do you keep using the equipment without changing the equipment? Yes. Do people watch you do your work? Yes, they do. Uh, do you work, uh, would you be considered a performer? Yes. Uh, do you perform for either carnivals or circuses? or outdoor mm. fairs? No. Amusement parks? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I think we couldn't agree that specifically it was a carnival or an outdoor circus or an amusement park, but it's in the area of general performance for entertainment purposes, Dorothy, so you go. Uh, well, she has said that, that she doesn't do it indoors, but other people do, is that right? It can be done indoors. Is, what you mean. is there any element of um, dexterity, physical dexterity, necessary to perform what yes. you do? Uh, is there a certain amount of risk involved? No, I don't think no, so. No, not to any substantial no. degree. Uh, Mr. Sir? Ms. Chamberlain, I is there any music involved in the uh, Sometimes. things you do? Sometimes. I'd say most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, is it, would it, could it be at all related to the dance? Well, it could be related to the dance. But uh, can I eliminate the twist from that? <laughs> you certainly can. <laughs> Bet you'd be good I at it. I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, what? Excuse me, may we yeah. have a short conference just to uh, clarify something? Fifteen seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Ms. Chamberlain said in response to a question of Arlene's that she didn't wear anything special. Would you... Um, Mind confirming that, that she wears just an ordinary dress when she's dancing? No, this, the, the question was not asked in those, those terms. No. Oh, I see. All yes. right. Do you wear some kind of a uniform when you're doing the, uh, what you do? Uh, yes, you... it's a very general term on the program, uniform yes. or costume, yes. Mm -hmm. would, would the thing that you do have any connection or be used in any connection with a sport? Yes. Might the sport possibly be football? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Francis? Are you, or could you, do what you do on or near water? Yes. Would you sometimes be underwater? Yes. Would you have anything to do with uh, skin diving or, or uh, deep sea diving of any kind? Mm, if you dove from something into something, <laughs> then you would undoubtedly be well, diving would it be a pretty from something deep into dive. something. It would be a pretty deep <laughs> sea dive. I'm going to give you a no answer, but say that I think uh, you have finally come to the point where you, you're so close to it, once again, you've virtually gotten it, because Miss Chamberlain does an underwater act in a nightclub. Oh. <laughs> Where are you doing it presently? I'm at the Marlin Beach Hotel in Fort Lauderdale and the Everglades Hotel in Miami. Ah, fine. Well, isn't that indoors? Isn't that indoors? In a no. nightclub? 
no, it's outdoors. The, the cables are all indoors, but the pool itself is outdoors, you see. This is why I said it can't oh, be done. Oh, 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 I know. I haven't, it was, is this your operation? Do you do this over No, uh, my uh, employer is Mr. Bob Maxwell, who produces these underwater shows. Ah, fine, then you just well, go around I the country. A, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, lucky nightclub patrons, may I say, and thank you very thank much you. for being our guest. What nice is you? And we'll meet tonight's mystery guest after this message. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity for which the panel, as you all know, is always blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. yes. Yep. Good. Will you enter Mystery Challenger and <laughs> sign in, please? <laughs> all right. Panel, as you know, different form of questioning. Darren, I think perhaps you've been told of this. We have a different form of questioning for this part of the program, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Are you a star of motion pictures? Yes, I have been. Mr. Sir? Have you also appeared on any panel shows and television? Yes, I have. Miss Francis? Have you appeared ever in the theater? Oh, yes. <laughs> Miss McGavin? Well. Recently. Yes. Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you married to an actor? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> One down, nine to go, Mr. Sir. Could you yeah. possibly be a member of the masculine sex? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. Are you appearing in Are you appearing in the theater now, or have you this past season appeared on Broadway? Yes, I have. Darren <laughs> Gaffin, <laughs> is the uh, property in which you are playing currently on Broadway is it a musical? Yes. Miss Kilgallen, I'm already done. <laughs> uh, is it, uh, did it open within the last month? No. Two down at eight to go, Mr. Sir. Do you ever use a lonesome bird in your act? Or mention one? No, no. Three down at seven to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> the last month musical. Dirty bird. Uh, have you, um, are you appearing at the present time in the... About the biggest musical hit on Broadway, How to Succeed? I'm afraid so. Did you once start with a megaphone and now you're ending up with a microphone? Oh, yeah! You're Rudy Valley! <laughs> Howdy, boy! Howdy, Mr. Howdy, properly. How to succeed in business without really trying is, I think, one of the greatest hits, certainly one of the one or two greatest hits of this season on Broadway. Yes. Abe Burroughs, whom you all remember, who was with us on the panel once I wrote it, I believe. He did a great job. He did a great job. Oh, it's so good to hear his natural voice again. <laughs> Dorothy, we're sorry to have done that to you. That must have thrown you for a loss. Oh, what did you do with your boy? I want to thank him. You remember Tommy Riggs? <laughs> and that's Tommy Riggs. That's the best disguise great... we've had in a long time. Oh, that's that marvelous, was loads of yeah. Fun. Well, I must say, I take a lot of pride in, in Rudy Valley because he's a New Englander, as I count myself, from Maine, and uh, has never let a great career lapse. He always seems to find a new stage upon which to play and to go to new heights, and he's done it again. Congratulations and thanks, Rudy, for being with us. Nice to have you. We'll be back after this word from our... And may I now say good night to Eileen Francis. Good night, John, and good night, Darren. It was lovely to have you. Thank you, Arlene. Good night, uh, Dorothy. I'll see you later at the Peppermint Lounge. Good night, Darren. <laughs> you bet. Good night, Janet. Thank you. Good night, John.
good night, Mr. Turf. And Darren, it has been nice indeed having you with us. Hope we'll see you back again one of these days. Thank too. you, John. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line? What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. Johnny Olson speaking.